India's Foreign Trade and Overview Government of India took bold initiatives in July 1991 by the way of introduction of reforms, notably in the sphere of industrial trade and fiscal policy. The trade policy reforms aim to create an environment to enable increase in exports at a rapid pace, raise India's share in world exports and find a lasting solution to the balance of payments crisis. For this purpose, significant changes in the export-import exim policy were made and country-specific and commodity-specific measures were taken to promote exports. In this lesson, you will learn the role of foreign trade in the economic development, trends in India's foreign trade and composition and direction of exports and imports. You will also be acquainted with the problems of India's foreign trade. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to explain India's foreign trade, describe foreign trade composition, describe problems of India's export sector. Foreign trade has become mandatory in this world. Progress for small countries depends upon their ability to trade relatively freely with the rest of the world. On the other hand, economic growth led by exports is accompanied by the flow of capital and acquisition of new technology, rising level of savings, economies of scale, etc. This also leads to improvement in quality and forces firms to cut costs and seek new ways of producing and selling their goods. These measures would improve the productivity of the different sectors of the economy. Countries which liberalize their trade practices and learn to compete in the global marketplace have economies which grow and develop much faster than those countries which choose to protect their domestic markets. Nevertheless, there remains continuing disagreement in all countries as to how far they should go towards abolishing restrictions on foreign trade. Labor immobility income disparity, productivity differences, and long-standing ethnic and national conflicts all combine to generate political resistance to continued trade and investment liberalization measures. A global trading system was conceived and eventually embodied in the General Agreement on Tariff and Trade. The GATT system founded in 1947 had as its underlying premise that the protectionist policies were inimical to nation's economic well-being. The gate established a variety of principles which began a process of economic integration that continues to this day. The World Trade Organization, WTO, successor organization of the GATT, is the latest culmination of multilateral trade policy consensus building efforts. Look at the table shown here. It gives us a clear understanding of India's exports, imports and trade balances. The export has been gradually increasing, but the import has increased at a faster rate. As a result, the trade balance has been negative over the years. There has been substantial change in the composition of foreign trade over the years. Several new items have been entered in the export basket. Trends in India's foreign trade over the last five years can be understood by the table shown here. India's export was largely agro-based during the 50s. Three principal traditional items, textiles, jute manufactures and tea accounted for nearly 54% of the country's export. The need of industrialization was felt badly. Capital goods and technology were needed for industrialization. During the 60s, various measures were adopted to give a fillip to India's foreigner trade. Imports were made relatively easier and the export promotion measures were adopted. Government of India gave a definite shape for the first time to the export policy during the 70s. Exports were accorded the third place of importance next to the defense and food. 
90s witnessed a new era for India's foreign trade. The foreign exchange reserves dwindled to the lowest level in 1990-91. Realizing the importance of export in the development of the economy, the government of India introduced reforms in industrial trade and fiscal policy in July 1991. In order to attain self-sufficiency, Government of India put stringent restrictions on imports since the beginning. The policy of import substitution was adopted to give boost to the domestic industry. The second plan gave a new thrust to the process of planned development with emphasis on capital-intensive investment. The country was not in a position to produce the required capital goods needed for the developmental purposes. The need for import of capital goods was felt at this juncture. The table here shows composition of exports during 2008-2009. The table here shows composition of imports 2008-2009. Substantial changes have also been witnessed in the direction of foreign trade. USA has emerged as a major trading partner of India. Let us have a look at India's exports to various countries. The table on the screen here shows the direction of India's imports from its prominent business partners. Among the major problems faced by Indian exporters include poor quality image, high costs, unreliability, infrastructural bottlenecks, inadequacy of trade information system, supply problems, faceless presence, uncertainties, procedural complexities, and institutional rigidities, etc. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Made in India enjoys good reputation in the markets abroad. Right or wrong? Wrong. Technological factors and low productivity contribute to high cost of production in India. Right or wrong? Right. An efficient trade information system is essential for success in the dynamic global market. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Trade facilitates the flow of capital and speeds up the acquisition of new technology. Exports not only contribute directly to the economic growth, but more importantly, also permits more imports and a rapid modernization of production. The result is an efficient domestic industry fully geared to international competition. In the 50s, exports largely comprised of agricultural products. During the third plan, several new products principally in the engineering and chemical fields emerged for the first time, and this trend continued. The 70s saw a significant diversification of exports. Handicrafts emerged as the single largest foreign exchange earner. Indian exports now include engineering goods, electronics and computer software, chemical and chemical products, leather and leather manufacturers, garments, cotton fabrics, rayon and woolen textiles, gems and jewelry, handicrafts, handmade carpets, processed foods and marine products. Emphasis at the same time has also been laid on the export of traditional items like agricultural commodities, ores and minerals and plantation crops.